Uh, I want to welcome uh, everyone to my lecture today. Of course, uh, today I'm actually going to be walking you through another exciting topic in statistics. Uh, give me one second. I'm actually uh, going to pull up my slide. Okay, so uh, I need you guys to confirm uh, if you have actually see my slide. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for confirming that. Uh, like I said, I want to welcome everyone to my lecture today. Uh, today, I'm actually going to be walking you through what I call rich regression approximation to Bayesian regression. Uh, before now, uh, I introduce you to Bayesian linear regression, and we've also done uh, rich regression. And of course, uh, today, uh, I'm actually going to show you the connection between Bayesian linear regression and rich regression. Now, in my outline today, uh, I'm actually going to walk you through, uh, we're going to have a recap on Bayesian linear regression, we're going to have a recap on rich regression, and we're also going to, uh, you know, I'm also going to show you how um, the uh, rich regression can actually be derived from the Bayesian linear regression. Okay, so uh, let's have a recap on the Bayesian uh, linear regression. Um, you know, uh, the other time, I actually said um, when we're trying to build a model uh, to characterize a uh, relationship uh, among variables, uh, what we normally want to do, um, we're going to build a model uh, so that um, the response can actually be predicted uh, where we have information about predictors. Okay, so, but you know what, uh, you know, when we assume a straight line um, relationship, uh, of course, we use the conventional ordinary linear regression, and at the end of the day, we, got, we have a single estimate, okay, of uh, the response, okay? But you know what? Um, you know, in the case of Bayesian linear regression, of course, uh, it is assumed that the response uh, variable is actually going to be sampled from a given probability distribution and, of course, uh, normal. Okay, and not only that, uh, the model parameters are also going to be estimated, you know, also going to be sampled from a given uh, probability um, distributions, okay? And uh, unlike uh, in other least, uh, least square, or that is unlike um, in the uh, conventional linear regression, we are, um, the data said, we completely inform us about the model, but in the case of Bayesian linear regression, we, uh, we know we believe is that uh, we have uncertainty in the models, okay? There exists uncertainty in the model, and that is the reason why our uh, models are actually going to be treated as a probab, you know, as a, as a random variable uh, in such a way that we need to seek for the probability or distribution of that. So as you can see right now, um, the, the model that I'm actually showing you now, okay, uh, the response variable Q uh, is a function of um, the input variable and um, uh, regression parameter and the noise, okay, which I call the stochastic uh, component. And of course, uh, the response variable here is actually uh, normally distributed with the mean of this, and this is the variance. Of course, and I told you the other time that um, the standard deviation will also be sampled from a particular distribution. And of course, um, you know, the, the common prior of choice used by researchers uh, is actually half Cauchy or for the standard, I mean, for the uh, uh, standard deviation, okay, why uh, we use um, normal distribution for both the response variable and the regression parameters. Okay, so, uh, you know, the idea of Reverend Thomas Bay 1759 uh, will actually be uh, used uh, to obtain a posterior or probability distribution of the parameters, okay, given the response and 
predictors, okay? Uh, so which is going to be equal to, you know, combining the likelihood with a prior, okay, divided uh, by the normalization that I'm actually going to call the evidence, okay? So in the linear regression setup, of course, this is what we normally have. Okay, uh, we consider the likelihood, which is more or less, um, you know, the probability, uh, having a probability distribution for the response or uh, giving the parameter and the predictor. Okay, but you know what, uh, in the Bayesian, using the Bayesian framework, we also going to assume that uh, the parameters are not fixed. Okay, you know, in the case of uh, linear regression, the conventional linear regression, the parameters are fixed, okay? But no, but in the case of Bayesian approach, uh, it's not gonna be fixed. Uh, the parameter is actually gonna be drawn from a probability distribution. Okay, so um, I'm also gonna have a recap on the um, visual regression. Uh, we actually use, you know, in when you are trying to characterize relationship among variables where you have predictors and the response, situation where we have a, a, so many predictors, okay, I'm talking about high dimensional or data where there's a lot of independent variables, there is possibility that we could have a problem of multicollinearity. And you know what? When the problem of multicollinearity is severe, of course, uh, the inverse of uh, S prime X, you know, the, 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 the S prime X will not be invertible. What I'm trying to talk about is that, uh, give me one second, I'm actually gonna write that. You know, if I wanna uh, estimate parameter in, um, you know, or just uh, in the uh, linear regression framework, uh, I'm actually going to use a beta curve equal x prime x inverse, okay, uh, x prime y, okay, x transpose y. And you know what? Situation where, um, you know, uh, the variables are actually correlated, okay, um, the x prime x, okay, the determinant of that will be equal to zero. Okay, which means it's actually going to be singular. And uh, you know what? When it is singular, uh, it means the x prime x is not going to be invertible. Okay, now that we occur in a situation uh, we are where the uh, multicollinearity is actually severe. Okay, so uh, the idea behind the ridge regression uh, is actually uh, to regularize. Okay, you know the mentioned non-invertible matrix, okay? Adjusting it to be invertible, okay? And providing a closed form solution for the parameter estimate, um, which is actually similar to the OLS, okay? So we're gonna have, uh, so, uh, you know, the residual sum of squared of the, of the rigid regression is gonna be uh, kind of different from the conventional linear regression, take a look at this guy here. Uh, that is actually uh, the residual sum of square, right? Uh, for the OLS, but uh, the, there's gonna be an addendum, okay? Uh, the, uh, you know, the new thing that was actually brought in using the idea of ridge regression is to introduce what I call the ridge penalty, okay? So this is gonna be called the ridge penalty. Okay, so this ridge penalty, uh, we actually incorporate uh, a, a, you know, a particular uh, notation called lambda. Okay, uh, if lambda equal to zero, of course, yeah, lambda equal to zero, uh, what that means uh, is that, um, of course, there's no problem at all. There's no problem of multicollinearity. And if there's no problem of multicollinearity, we expect the, res the residual sum of square of the bridge regression to actually, uh, you know, uh, reduces to the OLS or uh, residual sum of square. And you know what, when lambda actually uh, uh, becomes large, so large, of course, uh, what that means, if Langer becomes so large, it means there's a lot of redundant uh, predictors that needed to be shrink to zero. But there's something I want to let you know. Um, you know, the moment Lambda becomes so large, of course, the residual sum of square is actually going to increase, okay? Uh, but how do we now, uh, you know, balance the situation? We don't want to run into overfitting. Okay, 
you know, we don't want to run into overfitting and we don't also want to run into underfitting, okay? You know, the reason why we introduce a regularization is not to run into overfitting, but at the same time, we don't want to run into on, uh, underfitting. We don't want a situation whereby we're going to have low bias and there's going to be high variance or we're going to have high, high bias or low variance. So how do we sit in the middle? And of course, how we sit in the middle, how we balance the situation, of course, that I call uh, bias variance trade-off and that depends on the way we determine our lambda, okay? So like I said, the way we determine our lambda matters a lot. Okay, now there, I, there's something I actually uh, want you to see uh, right now uh, in the case of uh, uh, we're still on rage regression and how the question now is, uh, we know how, we know the uh, uh, estimators, like if I actually minimize the residual sum of squared, we know in the OLS, we normally obtain the beta cap, uh, the X prime X inverse, uh, X transpose uh, Y. But what what is going to be uh, the, re, uh, you know, the ridge regression estimator? Uh, this is the OLS uh, estimator. So that is what I'm going to want to walk you through right now. So I'm actually, we're going to make use of the o, all of that. So the all of that become residual uh, sum of square for the ridge, okay? And I'm actually going to walk you through how we can actually minimize the residual sum of square and, uh, you know, obtain, uh, you know, the regression, para estimate of regression parameter. I mean, um, what, are, what we're going to use to obtain the estimate of regression parameter as assuming a uh, rich regression, which I'm actually going to call a uh, rich regression estimator. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, if I do that, I actually want to write that in a matrix form. Okay, so this guy is in a matrix form right now. So this is the error transpose error. And of course, you know, uh, that error, of course, is actually y minus x beta. Of course, the, the transpose of that is actually going to be y minus x beta transpose. And that's exactly what I have right here. And of course, the, that is a rich penalty. Okay, so uh, the next thing I'm actually going to do now uh, is to simplify, expand this using the transpose. So the transpose of this guy now is going to be transpose of that. And of course, the transpose of this is going to be this. Okay, I think you know that. Okay, so we see how, uh, so that is how we got this line. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do uh, is to use uh, this to uh, multiply the all of that. So this multiplied by that, that's what we have. So this multiplied by that, that's what we have. And this multiplied by this, that's what we have. And this multiplied by that, we're gonna have that, okay? Take a look at that. So all what I just did here is just to expand and plus uh, the rich penalty. Okay, now, uh, if you take a look at what I have um, right now, um, you actually uh, gonna see uh, that uh, this guy here is actually this guy here and this guy here uh, is actually this guy here. I think you can see that right now. And of course, uh, this guy here uh, is actually this guy here. And I want to tell you, uh, this guy here can actually be written as this, okay? The moment you take the transpose of all of that. So now at the end of the day, you're going to see uh, that you got a mind negative of this and negative of that. Um, I'm actually going to have a negative two of that plus that plus that. Of course, then uh, when you uh, see that I got a negative of this and plus of that. Okay, so take a look at what we have uh, right now. Okay, so that is the uh, expansion that we just did. Now, the next thing that we want to do, get into this junction, is um, we're actually going to be looking for a way to minimize the residual sum of squared for the ridge estimator. So we want to estimate the parameter, right? We want to actually get uh, the ridge regression estimator, and we're actually going to minimize this by differentiating with respect to beta. Okay, so that's exactly what we're trying to do right here. Okay, differentiating the sum of square with uh, residual with respect of beta. And after doing that, we set to zero. And when we set to zero, we're actually gonna solve for beta. And at the end of the day, 
Uh, this is what we have. Okay, so when you take a look at what we have, uh, what is the difference between um, the rate regression estimator that we have right now and the conventional, uh, the OLS, uh, you know, regression estimator? Okay, you're going to see uh, when you set lambda to zero, okay, uh, here, okay, when you set lambda to zero, automatically uh, you're going to have the OLX, which is going to be S transpose. Um, hex, you know, you're going to have this one, then S transpose Y. So which means, uh, you know, we go from rich regression, okay, to the regression, regress, uh, we go from rich regression estimator to, um, you know, linear or uh, the OLS estimator when lambda equal to zero. You know, I told you when lambda equal to zero, there's nothing to regularize. There's no problem of multicollinearity, you know, everything is okay, okay? So take a look at that. Okay, now, uh, the next thing I wanna walk you through today, which is actually the main topic of the day, because uh, I think I just walk you, we just had a recap on Bayesian linear regression, we have a recap on rich regression, but you know what, what I wanna show you right now is uh, how we can actually derive the rich regression from Bayes, uh, from Bayesian on um, linear regression. And I'm actually going to start uh, from the specification of a linear regression model, okay, giving us that. And of course, uh, this is the dimension of Y, the dimension of the response, the dimension of the regression parameter, the dimension of the design matrix X, and the dimension of the stochastic error component. And what I wanted to take note is that of the dimension of the response variable and that of the dimensions of the stochastic component is the same. Take a look at that. Okay, now, um, you know, we are back at Bayesian linear regression because we want to move from the Bayesian linear regression to rich regression, okay? Now, I want to tell you that, of course, in the Bayesian linear regression, I told you that the response variable, as well as the parameters, they're actually going to be sample from normal distribution. Okay, so that is what I'm actually talking about here, the conditional distribution of y, or uh, given x, okay, given the predator, and um, uh, the regression parameter, of course, is a motivated normal, okay, with uh, y given x, uh, comma, you know, and beta follows a normal uh, distribution with uh, x beta and sigma square i. And you know what, uh, you know, uh, the y given x and the beta are independent, okay? That's an assumption they got to be independent. And you know what, uh, we, like I said, there's an insanity uh, in the models, and therefore we're actually going to assume a prior distribution for the parameter. Okay, so uh, we're going to say the uh, the parameter, the regression parameter. Okay, the BJs are multivariate normal. Okay, uh, we are all of the. Uh, you know, the beta j's are independent and have the same mean uh, and variance. Okay, so we actually going you know, to assume that the mean uh, of uh, the regression parameter is actually zero and the variance covariance is going to be toy square identity. Okay, so that's going to be the assumption we're working with the Bayesian regression right now. Okay, and of course, you know, uh, I needed to obtain the posterior distribution of the parameter given the response and the predator, I think you know that, and that is actually going to be the combination uh, of the likelihood and the prior, right, divided by the normalization, okay, so this guy here is actually what we call normalization, and another name for that is evidence, okay, we call that evidence, okay, now, uh, when you combine that, um, you're going to see that, uh, we're, going, we're only going to integrate, okay, this guy here with respect to beta, don't forget, uh, the beta, the regression parameter is random, it's subject to variation, and that is the reason it varies, and that's why we're integrating that with respect to beta, okay, and of course, when you take a look at this guy here, like I said, it's likelihood, okay, that's what I call likelihood, I tell you know that, and this guy here is actually the prior, right? Okay, take a look at that. Okay, now, um, I don't forget that um, we, 
can also rewrite the whole of this, uh, uh, you know, instead of me to be precise or uh, using a quality sign, I can actually use a proportionality sign. And when I use a proportionality sign, I'm only going to concentrate on the numerator alone, which is this guy here. And you know what? Um, we want to have, don't, for, don't forget, we assume a, a probability distribution for the likelihood. We also assume a probability distribution for the prior. Okay, uh, for the likelihood, the probability distribution is actually uh, this guy here. Of course, you know, when you want to talk about the OLS that we did uh, before, okay, you're actually going to see that using the method of maximum likelihood, uh, that is actually what we're going to maximize. Okay, look at that. Okay, so if you take a look at it, the prior side, you know, we have assumed that uh, the regression parameter uh, have the same mean, which is zero, right? Okay, take a look at that. They have a mean zero, and you know, it follows a normal distribution on uh, which means zero, and the variance of that is a uh, toy squared. I think you know that. So, and that is the, that is the expression of the prior. Take a look at that. That's the expression for the prior. Okay, so when you take a look at this guy right now, okay, so when you simplify this guy here okay oh uh, oh uh, uh, can you guys say confirm again uh if you guys are still hearing me clearly okay thank you so much so beta minus zero uh it's gonna be beta uh transposed you know that minus zero i'm actually gonna have that okay so take a look at this guy now take a look at this guy now so that's exactly uh what we have okay now um when you take a look at this guy now okay you're actually gonna see uh that um, uh, you know, uh, you know, there's an exponential here. Uh, there's an exponential here. So combining that, of course, this is what we're actually going to have. And when we have that, um, we actually want to obtain, uh, you know, the uh, the ridge regression uh, estimator, right? Using the method of maximum uh, likelihood, right? Okay. So when we are trying to do that. Uh, you know, you can see the negative right here. So uh, if I go from that uh, odd max to minimize, so I'm actually going to have a positive side and I'm only going to be considering just the exponent alone. Okay, take a look at that. That's why I have this, okay? Now, when you take a look at this guy now, um, you know, uh, we have, uh, if you multiply uh, both sides by two, don't forget you have set something to zero. So when you multiply both sides by two, of course, uh, I'm actually going to go from here to here and you multiply both sides by sigma squared. Okay, this is what I'm actually going to have. And what is interesting now, when you take a look at this guy, is here and what is interesting now is that that guy here is more or less like lambda. And where do we find ourselves? We find ourselves now in the in the residual in the sum of squared um you know the the the, the, the sum of squared residual for the ridge regression. Take a look at that. So which means we've been able to move from Bayesian linear regression expression to the ridge regression right now. Okay, so that is the approximation. And you know what? Our lambda here is sigma squared divided by toy squared. So look at that. So this is how to show there's a connection between Bayesian linear regression and, um, you know, the ridge regression. Take a look at that. Okay. Yeah, uh, that is the connection between them. Okay, and don't forget, I told you the other time, um, you know, uh, the way we're able to balance a trade off between the bias and the variance in the ridge regression actually depends on the way we select our lambda. Okay, so that actually uh, depends uh, on that. Okay, so uh, I want to appreciate everyone uh, who have attended my lecture today. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, on the next time that I'm actually gonna come your way again, uh, make sure you guys stay safe and have a good day. Okay, bye for now, guys.